Hello and welcome to our 11th annual homeownership virtual conference. My name is Gabriela Munoz. I am one of the homeownership specialists here at BCCDC. And our topic that we're going to discuss today are your options to stay in your home. And this is something that's uh, related to if you're a homeowner and you might have some financial difficulties, we want to figure out what your options are. So today's purpose is again, educating homeowners and potential homeowners. So if you're thinking of buying, you want to be informed of these options. We want to make sure you have the information and guidance to work through that financial hardship you might have, connecting you with resources and having that information, the power is knowledge, knowledge is power, of uh, knowing what your options are beforehand. So jumping into what to do in this financial crisis. So the first thing is going to be your budget. The budget is truly the foundation of a household. So if you might have it just in your mind, maybe you've written it out. We want to look at where your money goes. If you have it and you kind of just keep it in your in your head, you know, and this is how much I spend or roughly this amount, I highly encourage you to actually write it down. Know and have it visually in front of you so that way we can start to trim out certain expenses. We want to create this crisis budget. And that is really figuring out what is a need and what is a want distinguishing those and cutting out those wants and keeping the needs, the needs of hopefully paying for our mortgage, clothes, groceries, utilities. Those are needs. Everything else becomes a want, including your internet, your cable, even your credit cards. So we definitely want to trim out as much as we can. We wanna get you connected right away with some resources and 211 is a quick, easy way to do that. You can either call them from your phone or go on to the websites that we have there for our four counties or in the area. Now in connecting with 211, they're gonna be able to ask you, what is your need? I need assistance with paying my utility bills. I need assistance with finding my local food pantry, and they make that connection. We want to bridge the need with the resource together. Now, we want to call your bank as well. And this is your servicer, your mortgage company. Who do you make your payment to? I promise they do not bite. We want to reach out to them, find out what those options are. They might explain a little bit of what they are, and you can also also contact us so we can explain further what your options are. Maybe you come to us first. As a HUD approved counseling agency, your servicer, when you're having difficulties, is required to provide you with the HUD number. And from there, you might get connected to us. And that's one of the first things is creating a budget for us, figuring out what resources you need and calling your servicer. So who is involved with your loan? So the first one is the investor. So the investor was the bank or person, usually it's a bank, that came in with a big amount that was needed for you to purchase this house from the beginning. So some of those investors, you may have heard these names, FHA, Federal Housing Administration, VA, Veterans Affairs, the USDA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. These are some of the investors that are guaranteed to, to be on some mortgages, I would say. Um, and you wanna check to see if your loan is one of them. That's who our servicer is connecting us to at their company. No, it's not Star Trek over here, it is your single point of contact. And so that person is a representative with a servicer who's gonna be your direct communication for options. Super common situation that you'd actually never get a hold of that supposed single point of contact, or maybe they try and they're not available or you just get someone else every single time. Super common situation, but 
we want to still make that connection. Now, let's look at the timeline. A lot of times clients are coming to me and they're like, am I going to have to move out tomorrow? I behind with my mortgage two months, a month, you know, what's going to happen? I got this letter from the bank saying that they're going to foreclose on me. So there's definitely a timeline here that is being followed. It's not just you're behind, you got to move out. So officially this foreclosure process starts when you are three months behind on the mortgage. And so you may have gotten a letter at one month, at two months saying, hey, you're in default. You need to take some action here. But officially you're not in default until three months have been past due. So the first step that the bank can decide to take, if assuming you haven't fixed that default, that past due balance for three months, would be to issue a notice of default. And that's an official recorded document with the county saying that you have 90 days from that date to either bring the loan current or find a solution. If assuming you make no contact with a bank in those 90 days from the notice of default, they will issue a notice of sale, indicating you still have 30 days to bring the loan current or find a solution before an auction occurs. So we definitely want to make sure to get that communication going with your bank so we can figure out what your options are. I will mention at this point that there is a protection in place, the California Homeowner Bills, Bill of Rights. And this is where if you have turned in a full and complete request of mortgage assistance application, they, the servicer, cannot move forward with any step in the foreclosure timeline. So maybe they issue the notice of default. Maybe they did that step, but you turned in a full and complete packet. And that means following up with them, making sure they have everything they need. Maybe they needed a letter of explanation. We turned it in and they officially say, we're good. At that point, they cannot move forward with a notice of sale. They need to finish their review and issue a decision before taking any further steps. So we do have a protection in place in that situation. So what are my options? So there's two different paths that we can take. Some people choose that they don't want to keep the home anymore. Or some people decide, yes, absolutely, I need to keep my home. So we're gonna actually concentrate on those, the intention of keeping the property. So jumping into what a forbearance plan is. So on this slide, uh, the forbearance plan, uh, we can go to the next slide there. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there we go. So on the next slide here, uh, a forbearance plan is an official agreement through your servicer. Again, they're the ones that are guiding this ship for us. So that agreement is to suspend or hold your payments or even reduce it in some situations for a period of time, normally three months at a time. It's a temporary banding, temporary fix. So for three months in this forbearance plan, you're not required to make your mortgage payments. It's not that they are not owed. We're just not going to have to pay them. No foreclosure processes will start. Normally it doesn't affect your credit either. We want to make sure and ask that question though to your servicer. Are you going to report my mortgage late or not? But this forbearance plan will at least guarantee you more time to find a solution to your hardship. Again, we're going to still have to pay for those months of payments that were put into forbearance, any past due balances. But once that forbearance plan is over, we've fixed the problem that we may have had financially. One of the options that they're going to provide to you, the next option there, is going to be a reinstatement option. And so with that, it's just that you, in one lump sum, pay off the balance that's past due. Easier said than done. Having to come up with three months of payments is, is really hard. So unless it was that our employer wasn't paying us and then all of a sudden they do give us all of the money that was owed, maybe that's one situation. Maybe we were able to... Um, 
borrow some money from family or friends and we now have the full amount needed to bring the loan current, that can be another situation to be able to reinstate it. But that's just simply you have the funds, we make the big loan payment and we're back to normal. Again, easier said than done. So maybe we actually do an application. Come out of a forbearance that might have taken a, a required an application, some instances. Sometimes it's just over the phone. But let's say we're now coming out of forbearance, we're applying for some options. So the next option that they might review us for is a repayment plan. And that's where they look at how much is past due and spread it out over the course of six to 12 month payments normally. I've even seen some for 24 months, which is a pretty large amount of time. But this is increasing your regular mortgage payment for that set period of time so that you can bring your loan fully current at the end. Again, we have to have gone back and our income has gone up and actually we need to be able to show that we can afford a higher payment. So it's not that they're just going to set you up with a big payment plan because that could in some instances be setting someone up for failure. We don't want that to happen. So if you have enough income, then they'll extend this offer to you. But if maybe we don't have enough income to support a higher payment than what we had, maybe we can't even afford the payment that we had before because we've had a permanent change of our options, of our income. Then at that point, a loan modification could be one of those options that they do. So this is where either we can't afford the repayment plan or we've had a permanent change in our financial situation. This could be complete loss of an employment and maybe we go back to work. We do need income to be able to do a modification but that new job doesn't pay me the same. Um, or maybe we've had um, a death of a borrower. I've had that happen to some clients before. So in this modification, the goal is to adjust the terms of your loan. And that's changing either the interest rate, how much time you have to pay off the loan. Maybe we're resetting it to 30 years. I've even seen a reset for 40 years but we're changing the terms of the loan to try and get you an affordable payment based on your new income. Now, we again, do need to have income in order to get a modification. So we have to be back at work. We can support a mortgage payment. It just, the one that I had before, I can't do it. And I can't bring the loan current from the past two that I had. So a modification, can hopefully help in reducing that payment, sending your loan back up on track. Another option that might be available depending on your investor, and usually this is an option with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, USDA, because we had mortgage insurance, is a partial claim or also known as a deferral. So in this situation, because there's mortgage insurance in place, that mortgage insurance will pay the past due amount that's owed for us, but move those past due payments or that, that sum of money that we need to pay back to the end. And so by moving those past due payments to the very end, we're gonna pay back the mortgage insurance company at the end of our term, our mortgage goes back to what it was before. I was paying $1,700 before, we go back to $1,700 a month. And again, it's, it's not that they're forgiving the money, they're paying it for us right now, the mortgage insurance company, and we're gonna pay them back at the end of our term. So whenever our 30 year term ended in 2035, that's when we're gonna still have to pay that balloon payment is what it's called uh, or the deferral balance so it, it definitely does depend on your investor if this is an option there are some major banks that made this an option for many people during covid even if they weren't guaranteed by one of these investors so it just just does depend on your loan if this is going to be an option available to you or not 
So jumping into our next slide, I'm going to mention the California Mortgage Relief Program, but we have a special guest here with us that's actually going to talk about more in detail of how this program works. So jumping back here, thank you so much for that information. Again, super key that we know that this program is available. The California Mortgage Relief has been able to already help quite a few Californians. It is programs that are available nationwide. It depends on each state, how they created it. Um, but it's definitely a great program that we have here locally. If we can help you apply, absolutely, we're here to do that. So next steps. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, your budget. Write it out if you don't have it written. We have a resource on our website, bccdc.org forward slash resources with a copy of a budget that you can use. You want to write out your budget and start to identify things that you can do without temporarily or maybe even permanently. You want to call your service or call your bank and find out what your options could be. Again, we're here to help bridge that communication gap. We're here in any way that we can help you guys to, to figure out what your options are. 211 is another great resource. We want to jump on those resources as soon as we can to help our budget, support our budget expenses, reducing as much as we can through those assistances. So again, calling 211 or going through their websites. If you're not sure if your loan is Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, there are some websites that you can actually look it up. Um, normally, I recommend just to check on your mortgage statement if you have something that's being paid out for MIP or PMI, mortgage insurance, then we're probably under one of those umbrellas, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, VA, USDA, or FHA. Also, you can visit the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They have a website specifically for homeowners and finding assistances for the mortgages. This came about during the height of COVID because there was so much going on with what was out there, what was available. So they kind of put it all together in one single web page. But as I mentioned, we are here to help you as well. So we do have some additional services that I want to mention here at BCCDC. So we do offer a variety of different workshops. This is one that we're hosting today, but we do offer a variety of workshops on a regular basis. We have our home buyer education classes. We have our home smart series. So we try to highlight a different topic for homeowners, prospective homeowners. Um, every month could be related to credit, related to home maintenance, wills and trusts, uh, investing, retirement, thinking of those things. So we do offer a variety of workshops and sometimes we'll offer a workshop specifically on home preservation. We've done the California Mortgage Relief, an actual presentation when they first launched the program in California. Um, so we do try to have some workshops. But what I would really like to highlight is our coaching and counseling services. So sorry, the slide hasn't moved over, but uh, our counseling and coaching services, what in dealing with homeowners facing financial difficulties, that's one of our big focuses right now is in trying to connect people with resources that maybe is not being communicated to by their servicer, or maybe they're just not understanding the what exactly they're telling you because they do use different terms that we don't know. So with our foreclosure prevention counseling, what we're here to do is actually figure out what type of loan you have, what are your options, and moving forward with those options to help you bring your loan current, find that solution, avoid the possibility of foreclosure. We've had clients with notices of default that have come to our offices and we are jumping on immediately to try and help resolve it. Even a notice of sale, I've had a couple of those situations, very stressful for sure. And we're trying to be a resource that can lessen that and find, again, those resources to help you. We want to have that connection. And um, I, I'll mention the other assistances with our loans and down payment assistances. We do have a separate department that's in charge of actual first mortgage financing and down payments. So make sure to visit our BCCDC lending virtual booth and more information from them. Um, but that concludes my time here. And so please make sure to send me your questions in the chat 
or visit our virtual booth. We are also there and we have additional staff members there to help and answer any questions. So I'm gonna stick around and answer your questions that you might have. But again, thank you so much for joining us for this conference. I really hope you guys are all enjoying it and getting a lot of the information that our different partners have to share. Make sure to visit all those different booths, check out what they have. They have a lot of flyers, they even have raffles. So make sure to visit those virtual booths there. And if you do have questions, shoot them my way. I'm here to help in any way that I can. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy the rest of the conference.